Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earth and Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. And praise be to the Most High God who has given us another day in which we can consider his holy word and learn to walk in his ways. For those of us who speak English, the King James Version of the Holy Bible is the word of God. So my sisters, today I want to speak to you about narcissism and particularly how it is that a narcissist can steal your soul. So this is a very important message and I pray that it's a blessing to all who hear it. Whether or not you're familiar with this channel or not, I want to edify you according to the word of God and lead you into the light because these days narcissism is a pandemic, truly. And we who are not of this world, we want to be able to recognize it and also know how to handle it. Satan, the devil, the serpent, was the first narcissist. He envied the creation of God and he sought to destroy it. And so we can see that envy is a characteristic of a narcissist. So they see the light that exists in another person and they don't have that light and so they seek to destroy that light. They don't have it themselves and they hate it because it exposes them and they seek to destroy the goodness in another. We who are God's people recognize that this tendency was in the Pharisees who crucified the Lord Jesus Christ and verily it is very prevalent in the world today. Envy seeks to destroy that which it doesn't have, and it glories in wickedness. Now that we've mentioned that, and there are other videos on this channel about narcissism, and I will post the playlist about that in the description box directly underneath the video for those of you who are interested. But we particularly, as God's people, want to understand how to keep ourselves pure, how to keep ourselves from being affected by the evil in this world. Jesus Christ, when he prayed for his disciples, of which those of us who are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and filled with the Spirit are of, we are of his disciples, we are of his body and his bride, he prayed to his Father not to take us out of the world, but to keep us from the evil. And therefore, we need to know how to be kept from the evil that is in the world. You see, a narcissist harms you, and it's really hard to figure out why. Because if you are a Christian, your heart is not like that. You don't want to harm other people. You, you are glad when somebody else is blessed with something. You don't covet what somebody else has, and you don't envy it and seek to destroy the goodness in, an, in another. Rather, you want to encourage that because you know that goodness is something that brings life. So it's hard to understand why evildoers do what they do, and it can confound the mind. And this is the first thing that happens when we are exposed to human evil. And human evil is, is very similar to the darkness that exists in the devil and also in his minions, the fallen angels and the, the unclean spirits that came forth from them. And so we who are of the light can't figure out the darkness. And if we try to, we will become ensnared therein. And yet when you've expo been exposed to evil, one of the most common things that happens is to say, how could this be? How could somebody do such a thing? Why is this happening? And those very thoughts are the snare that can steal your soul. You see, figuring out evil isn't going to help you at all, my dear sisters. Trying to work it out with people who are of the darkness is not going to work. And so we want to go to the scripture to understand how to avoid partaking of the evil as Jesus Christ desires us to do as his disciples. So let's begin today 
and Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. And let's begin in verse 7. Go from the presence of a foolish man, when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. The second snare that exists, particularly in these times, is the internet. And so when we've been harmed by a narcissist, and it's so hard to understand it, it's confounding, and it's also confounding how many people fall for their deeds and their, their actions and their lies. It's very common to do an internet search, to Google the thing, to try to understand it. And there are many foolish people, and I don't say that to slander them, but just to take note that they are, that they have wisdom about narcissism, and they describe it to you, and they entice you to listen to them and be present with them when they don't understand the way of truth and peace that exists in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So if we want to be free of the snares of evildoers, then we have to continue in the word of God. And so we don't go to the internet to hear what sinners have to say about sin. Rather, we go to the word of God and understand that wisdom and grace and truth and the way of righteousness is found therein. Let's turn now to Proverbs chapter 9 and begin in verse 6. Forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. He that reproveth a scorner getteth himself shame, and he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. You see, when we're focused on what evildoers are doing, and our heart is thinking about those things, we are then tempted, we are enticed to speak things that won't profit us. So the way that most people handle narcissistic abuse these days is to think that the right thing is to argue about it or to stand up for your rights or, or to tell everyone, to proclaim everyone what happened to you at the hands of a wicked man or woman. But the truth is when you do that, that causes you or me or anyone who does it to get the blot or the stain. Jesus Christ said, What defileth a man is what proceedeth out of his mouth. What we speak comes forth from our heart. And when we're pondering evil, then evil is in our heart. And we're not being kept from it. And then what happens is we start to speak those dark and wicked things that are in our heart. And so when Jesus Christ prayed for us that we not be taken out of the world, but that we be kept from the evil. This is exactly what he meant. Let's read on. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. And that is why I'm here today is to help those of you who are just and those of you who seek righteousness so you can increase in learning and understand how to depart from the ways of a fool. The fear of the Lord, this is verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So knowledge of darkness won't do you any good. And verily I say, those who research the darkness get snared in the darkness. And then they start abiding in the darkness. That's what they put in their heart, and that's what they think about, and that's what they speak. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we have a choice as God's people as to what we think about. We don't have to ponder the deeds of evil men. 
Rather, we should ponder the things that are of the light and the truth so that the light and the truth is in our heart, and that is then, therefore, what we speak. Let's go now to Proverbs chapter 4. And let's read here, starting in verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look straight on. Let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. You see, if we're abiding in the darkness, thinking about the darkness, pondering all the bad things that have happened to us, that's when our foot is taken in the snare, and that is how narcissism gets you my sisters. And so we want to depart from the ways of the foolish, and we don't want to hang around with people who are evildoers. We want to seek the Lord and seek the truth of his mercy and his peace, and then all the things that we have need of will be added unto us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So what do we do when thoughts come into our mind about what has happened to us in the past. And of course, this is unavoidable. Thoughts are like the weather. They happen. But my dad, who who is not in this world anymore, had some wisdom. And one of the things he said before he passed away was that you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop it from building a nest in your hair. And thoughts come and go. We have a choice, though, about what thoughts we indulge. And when a thought comes into our mind that is of the darkness, we're thinking about what the evildoer said and did to us and how everybody believes them, perhaps, at this moment. We would want to do what the scripture says on this spiritual battlefield. So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And let's read verses 4 and 5. Hallelujah. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity, pardon me, into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we can't help it if a thought comes into our mind, but we don't have to indulge it. And we can say to ourselves, well, I don't want to be in the darkness. I don't want to think about the darkness. And while the darkness is very real, and what happened to me is very real, I don't want to abide there because if I do, if I ponder those things, Those things are what are going to be what my heart is meditating upon. And that is what will then proceed from my lips and I will defile myself. I will cease to glorify God with my words and instead begin to speak anger and bitterness and sorrow and pain and death. And this is how a narcissist will destroy your life, my sisters. We don't want to indulge that kind of thing. We want to remember also that there was a time when we were a sinner too, and we caused harm too. Maybe it wasn't the same harm, but it makes no difference. Sin is sin, and it all leads to death, and God in his mercy has delivered us from the darkness, so we're not the judge. We trust that God is able to judge the righteous and the wicked also. And if someone continues in their wickedness, then the Lord will deal with that. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So we trust our heart to Jesus, and we remember that justice will come, and we don't need to think about the darkness. 
we can abide in the light and have peace. Our eyes look straight on. We keep our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ, the one who saved us in the kingdom of light. So when a thought comes into our mind, we would say, I don't want to think about that. I cast that away from me in Jesus' name. And in that way, we are not taken out of the world. We are in the world filled with light and truth. And we speak light and truth and peace to our neighbors. And we don't take part in the evil. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4 now for further instruction from the word of God about our thoughts. Philippians chapter 4. Let's read here in verse 6 and then through verse 8. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. You see, even when bad things happen to God's people, it's a good thing. When bad things happen to God's people, it's a good thing because it helps us to see the difference between the darkness and the light. It corrects us. We see the evil that comes from evildoers. We see the evil that comes forth from evil thoughts and evil speech. And we see those things because God shows them to us so we can be grateful for the light and the truth and the way of salvation that he has given us. We are grateful then when bad things happen. And I am, certainly, because I am someone who is raised by narcissists. And they caused me much harm. But if it hadn't happened, I wouldn't have had such a fervent desire for the truth. And when God gave me hatred of lies, he also gave me a hunger for the truth. And that was the thing that led me to salvation in Jesus' name. So do I bemoan the fact of the things that happened in my youth when I was narcissistically abused? No, not at all. I am truly grateful because those things prepared my heart to receive the light of the word of God and the truth about Jesus Christ. And I seek for that kingdom, and I pray that you do also, in which dwelleth righteousness. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So we might pray for the ability to move on, the ability to not ponder those things, the ability to walk in forgiveness as God has commanded us to do. We ask God for strength to endure and patience and long-suffering as he was long-suffering with us when we were yet sinners. We ask for mercy and truth to abide in our heart that we might speak about the salvation that is found in Jesus Christ, that our heart might be filled with light and our mouth filled with truth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the peace of God, so this is what happens when we do this. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So our mind is kept, our heart is kept when we do these things. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if they be, be any praise, think on these things. So once we've cast away from us, thoughts of darkness, thoughts of bitterness and, and woe about what happened in the past or even what's happening today. When we cast away those thoughts, then instead we fill our minds with these things. And while it might be true that bad things are, are happening, that is not the truth that Paul, our brother, is telling us to meditate upon. 
here. He is telling us to meditate upon the truth of Jesus Christ and the holy God who has given us his word. Let's go to Psalm 104. Hallelujah. Psalm 104, verses 33 and 34. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. The meditation that we find in the word of God is sweet. When we abide therein, we have a good understanding. When we do what the word of God says and walk in the light, forgiving those who harm us, no matter what, because we know that there is a righteous God in heaven who beholds the evil of the, and the good, and one day all things will be judged, and we want to stay in the light. We don't want to abide in death. And when we ponder death and the ways of darkness, that is how the enemy snares us into falling into defiling ourselves so that we are no longer worthy of the kingdom of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's turn finally now to Psalm 17. Psalm 17. Verse 15. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. You see, Jesus Christ when he was reviled, he reviled not again. He came to save those that are lost. And we are his ambassadors. And while we live in this world, that's what we are here for. And the people who have harmed us, we pray for them that they might repent. And if they don't, well, then the Lord will deal with them. And then we are free. Then we are free. And we are able to attain the glory that Jesus Christ paid for, for us when we were yet sinners. This kingdom of light that we have been delivered into is the gift of God. And we remember that once we were in the darkness and now we are in the light, let us be messengers of light. I pray this message has blessed you, my sisters. Feel free to write to me if you like, particularly if you have not yet had your sins remitted by baptism in Jesus' name, I would be honored to be of service unto you in that because that is how we come out of the darkness to begin with. That is how we are set on the narrow path that leadeth unto everlasting life. Feel free to leave a comment below as well and know that I remain here to serve you and may the glory of God come upon his people as we walk by faith in Jesus. May God bless all of those of you who seek him in sincerity. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.